you probably know uh, who is presenting tonight. That's going to be Brad Ditson. He is a physiotherapist and endurance coach based in Tauranga, New Zealand. And his company is called Everfit. And myself, I'm a pharmacist by background. I've got a certificate in plant-based nutrition. And I also founded the Better Base uh, about a year and a half ago now. And it's a platform that um, delivers events. But then we've got a website. We're doing monthly webinars at the moment. And we've hosted a whole lot of great speakers this year. So if you haven't uh, watched our previous webinars, then most of them are available on the website and the other recordings will be coming soon. So we've got Dr. Luke Wilson, we've got dietitian Emma Stratt, Master Chef Aaron Brunet, got environmental researcher Mike Joy, and Ben Eitelberg, who I think is joining us tonight, he also talked about plant-based fitness. And then since then, we've also had Chris Hidawai talk about the Māori world and veganism and how they intersect. Um, and we've also had Dr. Renee Thomas, who is an amazing doctor working in the USA in a place called Loma Linda, which is a blue zone. So keep your eyes out for the recording of that that's going to be shared. Um, so some of our events, um, these are just a, a little example of what we've been doing over the last 18 months or so. Um, we run documentary screenings, uh, cooking classes, and work with a whole range of different amazing um, plant-based leaders. In the bottom right corner there, that's my local crew of um, plant-based um, doctors and leaders, um, as well as Dr. Luke Wilson, who came down to visit for the Big Fat Life screening. Um, more recently, we held a session in Wellington. This is the picture on the right um, in collaboration with the Pharmaceutical Society of New Zealand. So we were really excited that they um, invited us to come along and talk about how we can transform health through nutrition. So the idea really is that our system at the moment is very focused on using medications and surgeries to manage disease once we have it. Um, however, we want to shift more towards a prevention-based model, which uses lifestyle as medicine, and plant-based nutrition is a key part of that. Um, so we talked to about 50 health professionals in Wellington, many of them being pharmacists, but we also had a few doctors, midwives, um, <coughs> nurses, and the feedback was really amazing. So there's one example of a quote there, someone saying they're going to start using this information now, and a lot of people saying they're going to start trying it out at home and then um, look at sharing it more with their patients, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, so the article in Nourish magazine is called The Plant Prescription, and it talks about common conditions that we see in community pharmacy and how we can use lifestyle to help manage or prevent some of those things. So we look at things like fatigue, um, constipation, acne, and weight management, amongst others. So there are a few things that we do, um, and we've got lots of other ideas in the pipeline, and yeah, hopefully we'll be doing lots more locally in Nelson. And I also do some work for Doctors for Nutrition at the moment, which is a wonderful new charity across New Zealand and Australia that aims to put nutrition back into the heart of healthcare. So if you haven't seen the website for the Better Base, um, this is what the homepage looks like, and there's some free recipes there, thebetterbase.com. Um, but really what you're interested in tonight is the expansive wellness session. So uh, let's get into it. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Brad first. So as you know, he's a physiotherapist, endurance coach and athlete based in Tauranga. And he is a huge believer in walking the talk. He eats a predominantly whole food plant-based diet and he completes functional strength work daily and blends this with swimming, cycling, and running his Everfit physio business with family life and also writing for the New Zealand and Australia trail runner magazines. Oh, a lot to fit in. Um, so Brad's also the father of two girls and husband to plant-based GP, Dr. Coral Dixon. And he um, loves having a purpose-driven life while keeping the balance. Um, so I saw Brad speak at the Veg and Vines conference, which was in Gisborne earlier this year, and was just really in awe of all of the um, evidence-based habits that he has managed to uh, build into his life and, and his worldview, how that 
you know, it's far, far wider than just, you know, himself or his immediate community. He's really constantly thinking about how he can expand that. So I was really excited when he agreed to come on the webinar and I think you'll all learn a lot from him tonight. That's looking great. Okay, shall we get started? Yeah, fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us and I'll come back on in the Q&A afterwards. Great, okay. Well, thanks so much for having me, uh, Hannah, and thanks for providing this platform. I'm really excited about speaking about expansive wellness. Uh, it's a term I coined last year and realised really that it's, it's a concept that's been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years, um, and that is Wellness is not just about us as individuals. Um, wellness needs to include um, those around us, um, and not only that, but um, the whole of the planet, because the planet is a closed system. Nothing enters it, nothing exits it. And so we have to make sure that we all look after uh, us all and, and the planet. So there's some really cool quotes there from some pretty smart, famous people that are, that were, I think, on the same page. Um, so just to, just to get started, uh, first of all, sorry guys, I'll just, there we go. Just to give myself a little bit of direction, um, I'll introduce myself, uh, then talk about expansive wellness, what that actually means, and then a little bit about my journey and how I started on the journey towards wellness, um, and then look at 10 habits that I talk about with my physio clients and my coaching clients. Um, and these are habits that I've put into my own life um, over the past six years, um, just to see how how they worked and if they worked um, and then some takeaways a summary and then you will get some references from some of the key uh, books and articles that i've read over the last six years um, then hopefully have some time for some discussion so we can unpack this a little bit further so as uh, hannah said i'm a physio a coach and an athlete i really love just getting out into the outdoors um, it's such a uplifting experience uh, the last year or so i've been doing a little bit more counseling and psychology training um, and really just learning that we need to give people space to talk because when you actually give people space to talk, they tend to come up with their own solutions. So I think as health professionals, um, maybe we need to spend a little bit more time doing that. Uh, I like to also run functional strength camps. Uh, I do a little bit of RPM for Les Mills. Um, and I write as well, but my most important role is father to Eva and Stella, my two uh, younger daughters, um, to you know, 11 and nine year old daughter daughters and then husband to my amazing wife. Now that picture for me is really important. It's, it's just when our family is at our happiest is when we are living simply um, in harmony with nature. Um, and that's what that picture, I like to use that to really, um, yeah, just give my, give my decisions on a moment to moment basis so it's something to hang on to. Um, I think when we live with less clutter and less stuff and a little bit more in harmony with each other, and the planet, um, things are good, and we all need to, to maybe do a little bit more of that. So what does wellness mean? Well, look, it's a, it's a conscious, self-directed, and evolving process as we move towards our full potential. Um, it encompasses body, mind, and soul. Um, you can't separate that stuff. It's all meshed up together. Um, and it also takes into account the environment. And I think we need to be more expansive with environment. It's not just um, where we live. Um, it's not even the country we're in. Um, as I said before, the earth is a closed system. We need to make sure that our habits actually take care of our earth. Uh, we need to also be expansive with love thy neighbour. Our neighbour is not just the person next door, it's that Facebook friend over on the other side of the world. We are all in this together. And once we start to think a little bit more expansively about things like love, compassion, um, and you know, the environment, things, things will definitely improve. So it's a state of being where we are continuing to put ongoing effort into becoming well. Um, it should be an approach to healthcare that emphasizes prevention rather than just treatment. Um, and it needs to be, as I said before, good for the community, the country, the planet, and also good for the next seven generations. So what we do needs to, needs to take that into account. Um, I love this quote by Zeno, who was a, a Greek philosopher before Socrates. You know, all things are part of a single system, which is called nature, and our lives are good when it's in harmony with nature. I just, I just love that quote. Um, and, uh, and you know, these these are smart guys from hundreds and thousands of years ago knew, knew what knew what was up. We need to be looking after what we what we live in and uh, live on. Um, so my journey really started at 38. I had my midlife crisis. I 
had a major knee injury, couldn't run for almost a year, and I was sulking. And um, and at the same time, my my uncle Murray was going through a battle with grade four bowel cancer. And that really, and he was emailing it and, and blogging the family and telling us about his his battle. And it really put my knee injury into perspective. And my my lovely wife told me to buck up, stop sulking, and I did. Um, I really just got into my cycling, my swimming, um, and just really dived into trying to be as well as I can. Doing that, realizing that everything's connected, the mind, body, the soul, me to you, us to the earth and all within it. And, and once you start to wake up to that fact, uh, life becomes pretty exciting. Um, I think generally we are over-informed with self-care wellness info, but we under-apply it and we don't grasp the importance of the, the whole earth. And when you start to make small shifts, they're sustainable and they lead to great change. And so it's just about looking at one little thing that you can do and then working on that and then going to the next thing. So I'm hoping to give you 10, um, 10 habits that you might be able to take away with you today and you can try you know, one or two of them at a time. So my in was plant-based eating. Um, my uncle was talking about how red meat wasn't that great, um, especially for something like bowel cancer. And so our family started to cut down on our meat and we moved towards more of a plant-based um, whole food diet. Um, you know, there's heaps of nutritional tribes out there, but they're all going to agree eat more vegetables. And if I could, you know, write up a few words, I would say for the planet, it would be eat more vegetables. It's not about eating less carbs. I think people are demonized carb carbohydrates. It's just about eating less crap. Um, and if you can do that, you know, I think you're going to be moving in the right direction. We need to eat more plants and less animals. And that's simply because animals, are, it's a crime against wisdom to be growing these things to eat. They just take heaps of land, uh, heaps of water, heaps of resources. So we need more plants, less animals in terms of our food production. Uh, we're all fed from a, a broken food industry that pays no attention to health. Um, and, and we're treated by a health industry that pays very little attention to food. Um, so I think it's uh, really important to, to remember that. You know, plant food is, is awesome. Um, nature's pretty smart. Nature's put the medicine in the food, so we need to be eating more of that stuff. Um, we can literally change the world with what we eat. You know? um, the, eat uh, report, the Eat Lancet report came out and basically said we need to be eating more vegetables, fruit, whole grains, legumes, and, and less red meat and high processed grains and sugars. The UK, Canada, and all the, in the USA put plant protein before animal protein in their recommendations. Um, and then when you look at it expansively, animal agriculture is responsible for 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions. Um, that's more than all of transport combined. And some reports have it as high as 51%. So I, I just think we need to be looking definitely to eating more plants, not only for our individual health, but for the, the planet's health at the same time. Uh, the second one was mindfulness. Now I thought meditation was a waste of time of sitting down and doing nothing, but I put it into practice for a hundred days and I haven't really stopped it since. Um, I definitely try to meditate at least four or five times a week. Um, it's fantastic. You sit down, you get to spend some time with yourself, um, it's not about clearing your mind, it's about letting thoughts come, tagging them and then letting them go and just defragging your whole system. Um, it helps with flow between tasks, it makes you more productive um, and it, I think it increases your compassion for society um, and the greater good and it's just such an expansive thing to do. It makes you again aware and it's just cements on how everything is connected so uh, mindfulness meditation is a, is a great uh, have it to get into if you haven't already. So download Headspace, it's my favorite um, my favorite app, um, and get into it. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Number three, well, I think the chair is probably responsible for about 80% of my physio clients. We need to stand up and move more. I've had a standing desk for the last few years. Uh, it's just been fantastic. You know, motion is indeed lotion. Our bodies are designed to move and be active in nature. Um, and our sedentary lifestyle is literally shortening our life and taking away our functional independence way too early. Um, Hannah mentioned the blue zones. These are five cultures that live the longest and are the happiest. And these guys, they walk places, they do low grade activity throughout the day. Um, and they are part of a really fantastic community. I think we need to be replicating um, uh, what the blue zones are doing. And excessive sitting just simply causes discomfort, pain and contributes to injury. Um, and this takes away your potential to make the world a better place. You know, being in pain is very constrictive. It's not expansive. And so we need to sit 
less and move more. The next one is body weight exercises. You know, if you're not full body strong, you'll never reach your aerobic or your functional potential. Uh, this is true for the elite athlete right through to the 85 year old rest home resident. There's been several studies, one in particular showed that after a 12 week program doing functional body weight exercises compared to a traditional gym program, people were up to 60% um, more improved strength and almost 200% better balance. Now that's really important. We need a society that is, uh, that is definitely more balanced. Um, we need to decrease our injury risk. Um, it just helps your ability to get into nature, dig gardens, climb trees, grow vegetables, run on trails and see views from mountain tops. You can only do that when your full body's strong. Um, that's me uh, up Mount Travis down the Lewis Pass with my best mate Craig um, and uh, just had a blast. If, you, if you're feeling unhappy, get to the top of a mountain. It really I don't, it, it opens your world view. So we need to get full body strong now to prevent falls later. ACC are spending millions on programs for the over 65s. And one in three that have a fall, you know, need to be put in hospital. We need to be promoting full body strength now. If I had my way, uh, primary schools, just get kids doing push-ups, pull-ups, squats. Um, you know, just we need to instill full body weight exercises now. Um, this will help free up our health system to cope with other health issues. Um, we're all responsible for our health um, through our lifestyle choices and you know with full body weight exercises it's so important we don't stop brushing our teeth because we've cleaned them yesterday you know and so the same for our body we need to be doing this stuff on a daily basis just you know, even for a minute or two uh, it'll 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 make it'll make a big difference number five sleep now, everybody understands that quality sleep is really important but you know what most of us don't prioritize it so many professional sports teams now have sleep specialists um, we need to make sure that we uh, get off the screen at least an hour before bed so you know as soon as you finish here shut it down go have a ginger tea read a book um, before you go to sleep um, it's really important for the brain it basically just helps clear matter um, it helps process uh, the transfer of short-term um, storage into long-term storage and frees up the hippocampus for the next day. Um, so it just decreases accumulation. Um, so sleep is so important. Uh, if you're not nailing that sleep, then a lot of those other wellness habits that you're doing um, are going to fall by the way, so it'll not be very effective. But for further, further information, there's a couple of really good books, one by Sean Stevenson, the other one by Ariana Huffington. Uh, they're fantastic and then Rich Roll's got some fantastic podcasts um, there as well so you guys will have all these slides um, made available to you afterwards. Um, you know you've got those people that come up to you and say I don't need to sleep I can get by on five hours a night they're absolutely kidding themselves um, you know research has shown that those are people just slowly uh, crescendo down in terms of their performance um, so there's a point in sleep deprivation when you lose touch with how impaired you are um, the lack of sleep definitely limits your true potential to be able to um, be of service um, and be your best self. So please put sleep as a priority. Uh, this is uh, my, one of my favourite habits that I've, that I've taken on board, cold thermogenesis. I've been taking cold showers every morning since November 2015. Um, it's fantastic and I've been swimming in the sea uh, two to three times a week um, and without a wetsuit since 2017. I love the buzz that it, that it gives me. Um, it improves my brown adipose tissue activation, which um, brown fat compared to white fat is, is an energy uh, producing cell rather than an energy storage cell. It enhances your immune system. Uh, it improves your cell longevity. Um, and just think of it as a way to really improve your hardiness and robustness. Um, so starting some kind of cold therapy, I think is a fantastic way to um, boost your wellness and your health. Uh, so, you know, you can take cold showers to save the world. Um, I say 40,000 litres of water a year taking a cold shower because my showers are only about 90 seconds long compared to the average eight minutes. But if you want to save water, you're probably better to just eat a little bit less milk um, and meat because to produce um, one kg of beef takes around 15,000 litres of water. So, um, you know, it's again going back to how everything's connected and resources are important, especially fresh water. Um, also save money because um, the heating bill is a little bit less in our household. I'm trying to get my daughters onto it. Um, they, they do the last 10 seconds of their shower um, uh, cold, which is 
pretty impressive um, and they're slowly building on that. So just think cold exposure keeps you lean, improves your cardiovascular efficiency, your immune system strength, your health, your longevity, and it literally makes you a fat burning machine. So get cold um, and that, that's a fantastic pillar to your wellness. Uh, exercise, you know, cardiovascular exercise, uh, a little bit moderate, maybe 30% vigorous is so important. Um, and if you can do that amongst nature, get out into the bush, get into the ocean, um, you know, walk around a lake, just get out into nature and move your body. And if you can do that um, for anywhere between half an hour and an hour a day, um, brilliant. You know, that's fantastic. I realise we're all time crunched and we're all very busy, but we do need to prioritise um, movement in nature. Um, getting the heart rate up, getting it going is just so important. So yeah, make sure that you have some kind of cardiovascular um, exercise as part of your week and just make sure you enjoy it. People say to me, what's the best one to do? Look, just do something that you're going to be consistent with, um, whether it's cycling, jogging, walking, rowing, swimming, just find something. Um, I love swimming. I think it's one of the best cardio exercises there is. It's suitable for all ages. There's no impact on the joints using all your muscle groups. Um, there's some fantastic studies and there's references below that you guys um, will get later um, that just show how great it is for your longe longevity. Um, and you can stack the benefits by going for a swim in cold water. Um, so get out there, use nature. It's free and when you're swimming in water, rivers and lakes and oceans, um, hopefully you've got a love for that and you want to keep it clean. Um, so it ensures that we have good water quality. The other one's yoga. Again, something that I thought was just for a bunch of woohoos, but it's not. Um, it's fantastic. It's improved my running out of sight um, in the last two or three years. Um, there's been some fantastic studies that show that if you invest a dollar in prevention, you're going to save $16 down the track in terms of chronic lifestyle disease. And yoga is one of those things that if I was a benevolent dictator, I would make everybody do it. I think it would save our country billions. So please, uh, get into yoga. Um, it really, really is uh, fantastic for just getting that full body strength, stability, balance, and that just your mind and body sort of linked in nicely with it, with your breathing. So it's something that I recommend to all my physio clients and all my coaching clients. Um, and uh, people love it. Uh, you, if you don't want to go to a class, you can look at yoga with Adrian on YouTube or download the, the Down Dog app. Um, and that's a really nice way to get started in your own time. Ride your bike. You know, we need our cities and our towns to be more set up for commuting on bikes. The average car produces 2.8 tonnes of CO2 a year. Um, and that's uh, with an average of about 12,000 K of travel. So if we can ride our bikes a little bit more, we're going to decrease the amount of emissions into the air. We're going to decrease the amount of emissions that cause health problems like carbon monoxide. Um, and also other emissions that then settle on our crops um, and can get into our food system. Uh, so riding your bike, it, it increases your ability to do more exercises, improves your mood, decreases traffic congestion, pollutants, it's cheaper. It generally just makes you really happy and I'm pretty sure the earth is happier as well. So ride your bike, get an, e an EV or a, or a scooter, but we need to get more cars off the road. Fasting. Um, again, I thought this was a bit weird, but now I fast every Tuesday. I've been doing it for about two and a half years. I don't eat for 20 hours on a Tuesday. Um, and it's fantastic. I think the main benefit is um, autophagy. So that gives your digestive system a break so your body can spare resources to basically clean up um, so it can get in and get rid of cells, uh, cells that are, um, that, um, are sentient and uh, that aren't useful anymore. It can get rid of them. It gets rid of misguided proteins. Um, it's a fantastic way to be more mindful around food. Um, and yeah, you lose, you use less food overall in the week. And I think it also gives you empathy for um, people that don't have food in the world as well. So fasting is another fantastic habit that goes with cold water therapy, I think really well. Um, the biggest one um, is working on relationships. So when people ask me what the most important habit is in terms of health and well-being, it's actually the quality of your relationships. You can do all the yoga you want and drink all the, all the smoothies, but if you've got um, unresolved conflict in a relationship, that's going to cause stress, disease in the system, inflammation. So it's really important that we work on that, um, making sure that, our, that we keep our communication open, 
Um, we define roles um, in that we just treat people that we love authentically. Uh, we don't just save our smile for strangers, that we actually treat our loved ones um, with love. Love is an action, not just a gooey Hollywood feeling. Um, so that's really important. When you understand the expansiveness of wellness and that we're all one, we all have the same home, you know, Earth, um, and we need to expand that concept of you know, loving your neighbour, as I mentioned before. So that's really important. And then the final one is just we need to reduce, reuse, recycle and refuse. Um, plastic is an issue. Uh, there's about 8.3 billion tonnes produced since 1950, only about 9% of that's been recycled. It gets into our food system. It's been found in the deepest trenches in the ocean. Um, we really need to start being a bit more canny about how we use plastic. Um, the production of plastic is 8% of the, of the world's oil production. So we need to use uh, you know, reusable bags. So you know, use these reusable bags when you go shopping. It's really easy. Um, use uh, in an eco store, you've got reusable packaging. So you just you know, just go and fill them up um, at the refill stations. You, you know, we need to be just working towards not um, consuming as much plastic. And then we need to spend our money on companies that value our planet and protect nature. You know, people say to me, oh, you, you can't make any difference. It's all about the corporates, the companies and the governments. Well, you know, they're ultimately a reflection of us. And if we all band together um, and spend our money on uh, and, and use it as a vote for a world that we want to see, you know, we can make some pretty quick changes. Um, money talks at the end of the day. So use it wisely. So, you know, as I've said, nature provides and we need to nourish nature. Um, the more you look into it, the more you realise that that if we don't nourish nature, then we, we, we're just kidding ourselves. Um, so we need to make sure that our habits that we do on a day-to-day -day basis reflect the authenticity with wanting to care and nourish nature. And in doing that, nature will nourish us. So some takeaways. You need to schedule in some daily expansive wellness habits for yourself and the planet's sake. We've got a tidal wave of lifestyle disease and environmental destruction coming our way. So being reductionist in our thinking and solving issues um, that way is not gonna work. Uh, we need to act expansively. And that's with motion, not just motion, but with action around habits. So it's not just about talking about it and reading about it, it's about doing it. And I think if you can get out and do it, um, that becomes very, very powerful. And we need to empower each other. We don't need to nitpick. Um, with each other. We need to empower each other with an expansive wellness vision to strive for. And then we need to go out and work at it with daily steps to evolve and shift everybody towards that. We need to take everyone with us. We need to move along that spectrum towards true expansive wellness. We can't be truly well in a sick world. You know, we're all connected. And if nature suffers, we suffer. So it's time uh, we started to uh, act in a way that uh, yeah, is expansive with us and nature. So yeah, let's be more expansive with wellness. Live expansively. Um, be minimalistic, materialistic, but not consumeristic. So what I mean by that, look after the stuff we have, um, but don't buy too much of it, okay? <laughs> um, so don't, don't buy into this consumer, consumeristic model that everyone's in. Um, just, geez, be happy with a little bit less. Every time you spend money, as I said before, is a vote for the world we want to see. Take every opportunity to minimise your footprint. Um, ride a bike, uh, you know, look at an EV, look at public transport. Um, we're all connected to each other and we depend on each other and the planet for life. Okay? We need to move from a fixed to a growth and into a benefit mindset. It's not about how we can uh, you know, just look after ourselves and others. It's about how we can actually benefit the whole thing. So yeah, change the world by changing your world first. Be the best that you can be in all aspects and don't take up too much space. Slip on the edge a little bit, okay? So summary, eat more plants. These animals don't waste food, okay? If wastage of food's bad, fast regularly. Uh, meditate, do some mindfulness and yoga. You know, do some restorative stuff. Move more, sit less. So if you're sitting for more than three hours a day, uh, change that if you can. Um, do some body weight exercises daily. Start with just doing some push-ups against the wall, you know, just do five of them, then do 10, then maybe some squats and um, maybe take the stairs two at a time. Just do something every day. 30 to 60 minutes of moderate activity um, every day. Get 
into nature, love nature, nurture nature. Nature is where it's at. Schedule and sleep to defrag, watch less screen time. Okay, screen time uh, is taking away your potential. Uh, turn the shower to cold for the last 10 seconds. Um, I promise you won't regret it, okay? And it's coming into summer, so it's a lot easier to do and then work that habit through winter. Value the important people in your life and our planet with words and actions on a daily basis. When you mix words and actions together, it's powerful, okay? With it, when they're, they're done without the other, they're, they're not as powerful. And have a purpose-driven life with an expansive outlook, okay? So let's save ourselves and save the world at the same time, okay? Really important. So there's some references that you guys are all going to get to some of the, the books that I've read over the last um, few years that I think um, really put it all into perspective. Um, and if you want, yeah, want to connect with me, um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Strava, um, you can have a look at my journey and, and um, see, see what I'm about there as well. So yeah, now I think it's a good chance to get back and have some, have some questions, a bit of discussion around that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. Can you hear me all right? I can, yep. Yeah, fantastic. Um, wow, so much to absorb there, but I just love how, you know, you're taking such a broad approach to everything. Um, a lot of scientific um, evidence and literature takes that really reductionist approach now, and sometimes even in the plant-based world, we can find ourselves falling into that trap as well by just focusing on food. But as you say, yeah. wellness is so much more than that. Um, I think it was really interesting how you talk about um, relationships being, you know, the most important part. Yeah. So yeah. what tips would you give us, you know, if we are having trouble in, in that area, how do you kind of, you know, learn about the best way to be starting to be making changes? In terms of relationships? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, well, I we're think... We're not really taught a lot of the, these no, things. No, no, we're not. And look, I think... I think a big thing that's helped with my relationships is my meditation. Um, what meditation does is it gives you a little bit more space to be proactive rather than reactive. Mm. Um, and I think all of us struggle with getting feedback from people that are close to us. But sometimes that feedback is the best for us. Mm. So with meditation, it's allowed me to maybe be a little bit less reactive when my daughters uh, school me on something or my wife um, you know, Coral picks up something that I can maybe improve on. It's just about being more open and not mm. taking things so personally when people are speaking to you. Um, I think that's a really big thing. So just being a little bit more, give a little bit more space when someone's speaking to you and not just try to answer that, but just let it sink in. And that way, I think communication is a lot more effective. And, and that communication um, really helps with um, ensuring that your relationships are more positive. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that openness as well, you know, not letting things simmer away. So, you know, being upfront, but coming from a place of love rather than, you know, a place of, you know, anger or um, yeah. fear or those sorts of emotions. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we've got a few questions coming um, through. So Benjamin's asking, what is the starting point for helping someone to find their purpose? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I've, I've written a couple of articles on that, actually. Um, like, even taking some personality tests um, and just figuring out what makes your heart sing. Uh, you know, what, what, what you love, what you enjoy. Um, and then asking others, you know, asking others, hey, what, 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 am, I, what am I good at? Or what, what makes my eyes light up when I'm talking? And people will tell you, you know, those people closest to you will give you some information on that. So I think your purpose, we've, we've all got a purpose, you know, we've all got multiple purposes and different seasons for those purposes, but it's just about being open to it um, and not being too worried about external factors, but just figuring out who you are and, and what makes you tick and, and then hopefully what gifts you have that you can then use in service. Because um, if you use those gifts in service to others, um, then I think that really helps, um, helps with finding and defining your purpose. Yeah, absolutely. And you and I were talking before this webinar and you're talking about focusing on actions that make your heart sing. And I really like the way you put it. So, you know, if you try and do less of things that make your heart sink and more of the things you make your heart sing, then, you know, hopefully you'll be heading in the right direction. And I think yeah. also um, trying out loads of different experiences. So, you know, if you're struggling with 
finding meaning than maybe getting outside your comfort zone, meeting new people, um, yeah. doing lots of different diverse um, activities that you don't normally do. Um, maybe you'll find something that really interests you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, Sally is keen to know a bit more about fasting. Are you able to say a little bit more about that and the benefits yeah. of it? Yeah, but, you know, fasting has, has been touted as a really good thing for wellness for, for hundreds of years. Um, there's some really good books around and some really good resources around. I, I just think with my athletes, I tend to get them just trying a 16 hour fast once every couple of weeks to start with. So it's like going from dinner, um, not eating anything after dinner, um, missing breakfast and then having, having lunch. So this is a 16 hour and the research says that 16 hours is that's when the, the real benefits start. And just getting used to that and then and maybe doing it on a day where you don't have too much on and you're not too stressed. Um, and just try it out and then sort of go from there. There's so many other re regimes out there in terms of the 5 2, the low calorie. Um, Dr. V uh, Volta Longo has done some really good uh, work on it as well. I think it's just trying it out for yourself, seeing how it feels and going from there. Um, mm. But I've, I've got an article on my website, um, Fasting for Wellness, um, so that's available to, to the public if, if, um, if that person wants to go and have a look at that, and it I, I unpacks it a little bit more. Cool. And that's the EverFit website? Yeah, the EverFit website. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I'd also just chip in, if anyone's thinking about trialling, it's probably a good idea to run it past the GP first to get some advice, particularly if you have any medical conditions yeah, or absolutely. are on any medications. Mm -hmm. And absolutely. that goes for any of the other um, yes. wellness habits as well. Yeah, um, fasting has um, been extensively used in um, wellness clinics linked with plant-based eating as well. So True North in the USA is one of the most famous for using that and they put people on long-term fasts, which can um, give incredible results of things, obviously like weight, but also um, cholesterol, blood pressure and uh, diabetes control. But again, that would only be recommended under close supervision of a health professional. Um, and there's another good website if you're interested in learning more about that, the Plant Based Health Australia website. Um, it's written by a GP, Malcolm Mackay, and his nutritionist partner, um, Jenny Cameron. So they've got a section on fasting there as well. Um, John's just asked, are there differences with fasting for women and men? Yeah, absolutely there is. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the research is, is just with men. Um, there's definitely some um, things that you need to be aware of um, as a woman fasting. So that's where you probably want to you know, speak to a health professional about that. It's a good, a good uh, question, John. Actually, Stacey Sims has got a really good book that, that um, I think it's Raw, uh, and that talks a little bit about that. But there's definitely differences between men and women, and, and so you have to be a bit more careful with it. Great. Um, so all these habits, uh, it can sound a little overwhelming when you, when you look at them all at once, if, not, if we're not doing any of them. So how, how did you approach it and how long did it take you to start incorporating all of these into your life? Yeah, as I said, um, about six years ago, I, I had that midlife crisis with family uh, health problems and then my, my knee injury and I couldn't run. I just, I just started with one and what I, what I did is I... For, for my habits, I tried to do it for about 100 days. So mm. I did one habit for 100 days and then figured out if it was beneficial and then just kept it going. And my in was plant-based eating. So I started with plant-based eating and then, and then I just started adding more and more. Once a habit is established, it's not discipline. It's just a habit. It's, it's easy. So now I don't think of it as, as difficult. Um, and you just do one, figure out if it works for you, keep it going. And then if, if it becomes easy, then do another one. And then just keep, keep learning and keep growing that way. And then... After a while, I mean, my journey's only been six years, but I've added in some fantastic things that I would never have attempted before. Um, and the cumulative effects of them, I, I think are just fantastic. So I would encourage everyone just to start with one and have a play with it. Um, and talk about it with your friends, get them maybe helping you along with it as well. And then just add more when they feel right for you. Great. Yeah, I like that. Making it achievable, small steps. Break it down one, one thing at a time. Um, so we've got a couple of questions about the functional body weight exercises. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, I think functional body weight exercises are things like squats, um, lunges, push-ups, 
um, star jumps, burpees, uh, planks, you know. So it's just anything that involves the whole body and there's a strength element there. So I see there's a question there about yoga. Does that count as, um, it, it does. Some forms of yoga are really good for balance and strength. Um, others are a little bit more um, flow, flow orientated. But I think everybody needs to, to think about something they can do and do it on a daily basis, even if it's just a few repetitions. And push-ups um, and planks are a really easy one to do, plus squats, you know. So if you can just start with those two or three for even 90 seconds, um, do it and tag it onto something in an already established habit like cleaning your teeth, and then just start with that. I remember at the conference that you're saying you'd had a bar installed in your house to <laughs> Do your pull-ups? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a, I just got went to Kmart and bought a pull-up bar that attaches to the door of the garage. I mean, everybody go into the garage, I just try and do one or two. And yeah, and and, um, and, and even my, my daughter Eva does. She can do five now. Um, you know, it just and it's just it's just there. It's in your face, and it kind of just nudges you towards these habits. And it's they're not a chore anymore. That is part of my life, and it's it's actually quite fun and invigorating. Yeah, you don't need to go to the gym to do the functional strength movements. No, you don't have to. So with the yoga, how would you suggest people get started if they've never tried mm. doing yoga before? Yeah, it can be a little bit intimidating, especially for men, um, maybe going into a yoga class for the first time. But look, you just got to get comfortable with a little bit of uncomfortable. Um, find a class that fits with your schedule. Find an instructor that you like and just go in there and be prepared, be prepared to get a little bit uncomfortable and just start, you know. And then there's also some fantastic, you know, as I said, down dog app, um, and then yoga with Adrian on YouTube. She's fantastic. And just to start your yoga practice. Um, and I promise you, you won't regret it. Every world-class athlete I, that I talk to at the end of their careers, they all wish they'd done yoga earlier in their lives. Um, so it's just one of those things that, you know, the sooner you get started, the better. And I'm sure most of my athletes, when I started talking about yoga a few years ago, they'll, they'll all agree with me that it's one of the best things that they've added into their training program. Yeah, I've, I've dabbled with yoga and it's something that I love to do and I'm just currently trying to get more consistent with it. But I found that going to the classes helped to kind of learn some of the techniques and then finding some people on YouTube just to start doing it more at home. Um, yeah. That helped a lot. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so Beck's asking, any tips for encouraging whole food plant-based eating within a family setting? You've got two daughters. How did they take on the plant-based eating? Yeah, look, it's, it's a bit different for, for us because my daughters really helped me with it. Um, so my daughters went whole food plant-based because they made friends with a pig, Sophie, when we went um, and stayed on a farm. Um, and, and they were just appalled learning that Sophie was going to be turned into ham. Um, they didn't, you know, they didn't really understand it. So that, they went whole food plant-based before my wife and I, purely for animal ethics reasons. Um, and then my wife, uh, started going more plant-based because of resource and sustainability reasons. And then I went whole food plant-based due to performance and health reasons. So we've all sort of along the journey from different paths, but we're all sort of met in the middle. Um, I think it can be really hard if, if, you, if your family, if some family are still eating um, differently to you, it, it can create some conflict. And it's just, it's just coming to some, some compromise, you know, some compromises about things and, and just being just trying things out and offering things to your kids and continuing to offer and make it, make it fun. Don't, don't make it a chore. Um, the more you persist, the more they'll resist. So just keep offering gently and, um, you know, and uh, things will, things will turn around. I'm sure. Yeah. Have you got any tips for the favorite family meals that kids? <clears throat> oh, we just had, we just had vegan nachos tonight and they were delicious. My wife made this delicious, um, um, mincy concoction. Um, with black beans and lentils and um, you know we had um, nachos with those um, that's yeah. fantastic so we, we, we like that a, a nice um, vegetable curry with coconut um, coconut uh, you know uh, cream on top and we've got so many delicious dishes you know we've been far more expansive with our eating after going vegan whole food plant-based than we were before when we were eating um, meat um, we've just had to expand and and you know we, we all love it as a family now so yeah really enjoy it that's really cool to hear. Um, Hannah Shaw, who's a nurse down here in Nelson, she's just, I think, in the comment to saying that um, can be difficult when people in the house are eating different things. She's saying, yeah. can it ever, when you live on a lifestyle block and your husband raises his own meat and hunts? So, yeah, it can be really challenging. Um, yeah, it can be. Yep. 
my partner's pescatarian at the moment. So when we met, he was um, complete, you know, omnivore. Um, but, you know, he, he's been open to reducing. And I think, like you say, the relationships are important and, you know, yeah. being patient with people and yeah. giving people that space, the time to talk. And I think, you know, if people come to it from their own reasons and they need to, you know, want to do it for something that's, you know, means something to them, um, that always works a lot better than, you know, trying to you know, convince yeah. people with words when their heart's not in it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Some of my some of my best friends still eat a lot of eat, eat meat. I've got a, mm. a great mate that still hunts and has venison, but you know he's eating a little bit less now. He's eating more quality meat, um, and and uh, he's only eating meat maybe two or three times a week, whereas he's eating every night before. So you know everyone's just moving in, in a direction that feels right. And I think once you stack up the sustainability resource uh, use. Um, health, um, animal ethics, if you want to put that in as well, then uh, I think people just have to figure out their, their own journey and, and do it in their, in their own time. And it's definitely, you just want to live and be the message and do what you want to you know, do what feels right for you. And others will, will yeah. follow or, or they'll come in and question you and, you know, we're all on it. Yeah, together. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, well, there's a massive trend towards the flexitarian, reducitarian movement. And, <laughs> and that's only going to have be a good thing for the environment and for for the ethical yeah. reasons for animals um, and for the health benefits, every step does count. So there's been a lot of studies that show, you know, if you move towards eating, say, you know, vegetarian meals half the week or um, move towards a pescatarian diet instead of, a, you know, including red meat and chicken, then your um, weight is going to be lower. Your blood pressure is generally lower. Your cholesterol is generally lower. So any step in that direction is a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think also if you are eating, if there are people out there eating meat, just making sure that it's good quality, organic, free range if possible. Um, because I think if people are choosing to eat meat, you just want to stay away from that low quality uh, stuff. You are what you eat, eat. And, and a lot of those animals aren't raised in, in good conditions. So I think it's yeah. good that as well. All right. So different part of nutrition. Kelly asked, how do you navigate keto and um the high fat, low carb nutrition, um, yeah. and particularly in relation to fitness. Yeah, look, I've got a lot of, I've had a lot of athletes on the keto diet for uh, endurance sport. Um, and look, there's different ways of doing keto. You can do keto um, with a little bit less um, uh, animal fat um, and more plant fats. Um, so you can, you can navigate it that way. Um, the other thing is with, with keto is, um, there's some definitely been shown to be some health benefits um, with keto with certain conditions, um, childhood uh, epilepsy and a few other things. But I think on the greater scheme, when you're more expansive with it, um, a whole food plant-based diet is better on a few, uh, in terms of sustainability, um, in terms of planetary health. So if everybody chose to go on a high fat, um, animal fat keto diet, we would need three years to to um, be able to supply the, the food for that. So that's where I come in and I think a little bit more of it. You, you can be healthy, I think, on a keto diet, um, depending on the fats, you know, where, where you get your fats from. But for me, it doesn't stack up with the sustainability aspect as, as much. So that's where I come in on, on it. But look, I agree to disagree. Um, Grant Schofield and, um, and Mickey Willard, and um, I consider them friends, um, um, and, and I, I'm great fans of, of, of Mickey and, and Grant. Uh, the, the, they do some great stuff, and I really like to look at the commonalities we have between um, what we're talking about in terms of nutrition rather than um, focus on the differences that we have. Um, John's asking, what are good resources for someone wanting to go plant-based, but they're worried about lack of protein and vitamin B12? Have you got any recommendations? Uh, I think nutritionfacts.org is a really fantastic resource. Um, if you go in there and type in the search and it gives you some great videos and literature about um, some really good balanced science on, on that sort of thing. So I, I use that quite a lot and steer a lot of my patients towards nutritionfacts.org. Um, yeah, so that's one that, that, that I tend to use. Yeah. Um, the lack of protein, if it's, if it's for an athletic person that's why they're concerned again the game change is probably the best one yeah. for athletes um yeah. plant-based health australia have also got a page um around uh, fitness and athletics and b12 
um, yeah, again, Plant Based Health Australia for Nutrition Facts is good. Yeah, yeah. very much so. Perfect. Um, Sally asked, if diesel fumes are bad, yeah, should yeah. we be biking <laughs> in um, built up cities? Which yeah. Great question, and, and I looked at that myself a few days ago, and there's a great research study out from um, from Britain that showed actually you you inhale more fumes, exhaust fumes, when you're traveling in a car than you do when you're biking or walking, which I found incredible, but it's true. When you're in a car, it funnels it all in, um, and, and, and it gets emitted in, so you're actually worse. You actually get more car emissions traveling in a car than you do when you're cycling or you're walking. So. I, yeah, that, that I only sort of discovered that a few days ago. Yeah, that's really surprising. Uh, but look, I would hope that as people invest maybe in some EVs um, and we have better cycle networks and get more cars off the road, um, you can also wear um, uh, masks uh, as well. And then we can try and decrease the amount of um, the sort of pollutants um, in our lungs from, from cars, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Have you got any tips <laughs> on people who, I guess, haven't really been that active and where to start on the exercise front for the um, moderate to high intensity exercise? Yeah, look, I think that's that's another really good question. You don't want to go out and just do lots of sprints and things like that um, because you're going to probably strain tendons and, and muscles um, that haven't been used in that way because there's too much force put through. So just, I would start in terms of doing more intensity, maybe on, on an indoor cycle. That's a really easy way to, to do that. Um, so you can get your heart rate up without too much pressure on your joints. Um, uh, with walking, maybe just a brisk, a brisker walk, you know, just get the heart rate up a little bit. So just, or even using aqua jogging or, or aqua aerobics, um, using water can be a really good tool to get the heart rate up but have very minimal impact on joints and then gradually move towards more land-based stuff. So just start within your capacity, be consistent with that and then move up um, gradually. Don't force the pace too quick because otherwise the body will, um, it'll rebound in a, in a bad way. Yeah, definitely. And I imagine if you do it slower, you're less likely to get injured. Absolutely. And that'll just set you back even more. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. I think we've covered off most people's questions. Um, have you got anything else that you'd like to finish off with, Brad, that we haven't delved into too much detail on? Oh, no. Look, I just think... I just think start in terms of wellness, expansive wellness habits, just start with something that appeals to you from the, the list of 10 that I've put out there and just have a play with it. Um, and, and I think just think more expansively with, with how we are acting because it does have a ripple effect. Um, and if we can think not only about um, the planet, but also our kids and our grandkids and how they can thrive on this beautiful planet, it might just, um, it might just change uh, the, the way that we act and, you know, we're all in this together and we need to look at how we can collaboratively work together um, and, and maybe focus on what we've got in common rather than fight about what, what we disagree on. I think that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. That sense of community and particularly in times like this when our environment is in a crisis, um, it can be quite easy to you know, feel quite down about it. But I think banding together with other people and talking about it, um, you know, having meetups locally, um, getting online to the whole food plant-based um, Kiwis group, um, sharing recipes and, you know, really connecting with other people um, helps to stay positive. Um, yeah, one, other, one other tip um, around the stress management. I came across, um, Dr. Luke Wilson shared a website with me lately that um, can be quite helpful in terms of uh, managing stress and anxiety, which a lot of people are facing these days, and is another big component of wellness. Um, it's called Just a Thought, and there's um, free courses around cognitive behavioral therapy. So oh, I haven't cool. done one of the courses yet myself, but it looks um, really well done and it's free. So that's justathought.co.nz. Awesome. Right. awesome. Cool. Well, thank you everybody for jumping on and um, participating in the webinar tonight. And to you, Brad, thank you so much for all of your amazing insights. Um, definitely inspiring. I've got so much to take away and work on. Um, I think the cold showers is going to be a bit of a challenge, but... <laughs> Just try it. You'll love it. You'll love yeah, it. Yeah, I think heading into <laughs> summer, it might be a bit more um, inviting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. And... If anybody else would like to keep up with 
um, further events. Um, Doctors for Nutrition have got an events tab, so keep an eye on there for events around um, New Zealand and Australia. And um, we're hoping to have a potluck dinner in Nelson sometime over the next month or two. So um, we'll be sending out information about that through email. So if you've got anyone else that you'd like to request to be on the webinar, then let me know. We've got a couple more um, in the pipeline and um, yeah, we'll be keeping you posted on the next date for that. Awesome. So thank you again, Brad, and thank you, everybody else. Hope you have an enjoyable evening. Try and get the screen time down for an hour before bed and, yeah. and get the eight hours in tonight. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks awesome. so much, Nina. Thanks, everyone. Cool. Take care. See you later.